everyone, it's Miss Reed. Today we're going to learn about totem animals and how animals are important to First Nations culture. Let's get started. All right, before we get started, I'd like you to take a minute and think about how do you relate with animals in the place you call home? What are some other ways that people relate with or understand animals? I think you're probably thinking of maybe pets you've had, animals you've studied in class, maybe seen animals on TV or on the internet, source of food, hunting, or transportation. There's lots of ways that we connect with animals every single day. Some, but not all, first peoples, particularly the Anishinaabe, have a way of relating with animals that involves the concept of totem animals. In the Anishinaabe tradition, people are born into totems, dudums, or what we might know as clans. Depending on what clan you are born into, there are different responsibilities one will hold towards the land, humans, and other living things. The concept of animals as a guide was mentioned in the book, Sometimes I Feel Like a Fox, that we read by Danielle Daniel, and reflects the understanding of connecting human beings' experience with a particular animal. What is a totem pole? The First Nations of the Northwest Coast, the Haida and Salish, were masters of woodworking. Using cedar trees, they would create totem poles without the use of metal tools or nails, like we have today. The totem pole is like a story in a book. Each figure you see on the totem tells a story, and it is a way of passing the message from one generation to another. The totem pole you see in the picture standing is, uh, is of our own Beacon Hill Park. It's the world's tallest freestanding totem pole, which means nothing is helping it stay up, like other tall totem poles that have beams to support them. This totem pole stands at 127 feet high and is made from just one tree. If you have a chance, take a walk through Beacon Hill Park and see if you can find it. What goes on a totem pole? A totem pole usually has human, animal, and supernatural carvings. Totem poles are a way of showing kinship, family crests, and clan membership. For example, some Kwaklaq families of the northern Vancouver Island belonging to the Thunderbird clan will have a Thunderbird crest and family legend on their pole. Seen in that picture right there, that is a Thunderbird on top. Can anyone guess where that photo was taken? The Royal BC Museum. Now let's learn about the Thunderbird. This is a mythological creature with the power to create lightning with the blink of its eye and thunder by beating its wings. The Thunderbird can also be invisible and create violent gusts of wind. The totem pole you see in the picture is found in Stanley Park in Vancouver. The top animal is the Thunderbird, and below is a bear holding a human. The plaque that you see is found in Stanley Park and explains the totem pole you are looking at. The pole in the picture is a replica, which means it's a copy of the totem pole the Kwakawak artist Charlie James made in the early 1900s. This totem pole was used in a traditional cedar house to help support the roof. Next time you're in Vancouver, make sure to visit Stanley Park and find the Thunderbird House Post totem pole. Now let's learn about the raven. Raven is one of the most well-known figures in the First Peoples. Legend tells us that it was raven that gave light, fire, and water to the First Nations people. Raven had the ability to change between animal form and human form at will. Raven is known as the trickster. He is cunning and mischievous. Grizzly bear. The bear is a sign of strength, 
motherhood, and teaching. The bear taught people to forage for berries and hunt wild salmon. The bear also comes to their aid in battle. Beaver. Beavers are creative, artistic, determined, and cooperative. They are known as the carpenters of the animal kingdom. The beaver taught the first people to use everything around them and not waste anything. They also taught about the importance of teamwork, working together, helped them to accomplish very difficult tasks. The owl. The owl is connected with the souls of family members who have died. The first peoples view the owl with high respect. They are known for their wisdom, but are thought as mysterious as they are nocturnal, and first peoples have always been curious about the night. The image here is actually by a local Vancouver Island carver, Tom Laforta, who was born in Duncan, and he's part of the Coast Salish First Nations. Orca. The orca, or killer whale, is a symbol of family, romance, travel, community, and protection. Stories of the orca are about it protecting travelers on long journeys, ready to lead them back home when the time comes. Orcas are well known for staying with their families in pods for the entire lives and raising their young with love and care. Turtle. The turtle is known as the nurturer. It is shy and protective. It is a patient animal with great strength and endurance. The totem pole in the picture is located in Algonquin Park in Ontario. During a terrible windstorm, a hundred year old pine tree fell. The carver of this totem pole saw this tree and felt he needed to use it in some way and pay respect to the tree's life. While totem carving is not a traditional way of expressing Algonquin culture, the animals the artist chose include the turtle was a way to share his culture with future generations and honor his ancestors. The wolf. The wolf is considered very powerful. It always represents those who take care of the sick and needy. They are known for their loyalty, strong family ties, good communication, education, understanding, and intelligence. This totem in the picture is in uh, the Yukon and it was carved by the Tlingit people. Fox. The fox is known to be cunning, witty, and wild. It is thought to have powers of invisibility because of its ability to camouflage with its environment. Butterfly. The butterfly is a symbol of transformation as it changes and goes through metamorphosis in its life cycle. It is graceful and balanced and has the ability to accept change. The butterfly picture here is from the Haida. Eagle. Many believe the eagle to be the most useful animal because it can fly higher than any other birds. The eagle is considered extremely intelligent and is able to spot trouble in advance by soaring high in the sky. It is known for its courage, healing ability, freedom, and risk-taking. The picture here is from Stanley Park in Vancouver. Finally, we have the porcupine. The porcupine is a symbol of innocence. It is a good companion and a friend as it is trustworthy and kind. They are curious creatures. Indigenous communities like the Mi'kmaq, who are from the maritime provinces like Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and PEI would use dyed porcupine quills, like in the picture here, to decorate clothes, knife sheaths, drums, teepees, covers, and moccasins. Now that we've learned about some of the animals that some First Nations groups have a connection with, let's try and figure out what animal you connect with. Just a reminder, we don't select our totem animals or animal guides, they select us. Here are some ways that might help you connect with your totem animal or animal guide. Is there an animal you feel a strong connection with? Do you see a certain animal a lot in nature? Do you dream or think about a certain animal more than others? 
If these questions are not helpful, don't worry. Another thing you can do is go for a nature walk or go sit in nature somewhere. Um, and when you're relaxed, sometimes the animal will come to you. And if that still doesn't work, don't worry, that's okay. I hope you've enjoyed learning about totem animals and animal guides.